So I made this big old batch of bone broth yesterday. And when you are canning your broth, you will have to make it and then it needs to sit in the fridge. It usually takes close to eight hours. Overnight works great. So I usually make my bone broth the day before and then put it in the fridge because you see those lovely chunks of floating fat. When you're canning it, we need to make sure that we have skimmed all of that fat off so it doesn't affect or inhibit the ability for it to seal when we're canning it. This works great. You can also just use your hands, like whatever you want to do to get that off. Now, this is basically we have rendered down some tallow because this is off of beef, but there's little bits of the broth here. So you could definitely save this and use it for cooking, but it's not anything that I would use for baking and it would have to be rendered down and cleaned further if you were gonna be using this for salves or candles or soap or anything like that. If I ever get to have a dream kitchen, it will definitely have a water spigot that comes out but in the meantime, I'm just going to get my workout on and go and fill this bad boy up with two inches of water. So even though this broth is fully cooked, because we've chilled it back down, we need to bring it back up to a boil because that's what all of the tested and processing times are from a temperature where the product that's going in the jars is coming right off of a boil. One of the things I get asked a lot is if you need to sterilize your jars before you can. And if you are pressure canning for more than 10 minutes, which all of the items that need to be pressure canned will always have a pressure canning time of more than 10 minutes, then no, you don't need to sterilize. You just need your jars to be clean and we need them to be hot. So I just leave mine in hot soapy water and then rinse them in really hot water and bring them over right before they're ready to be filled. One of the other questions I get asked is where do I get my supplies? So I can, oh my goodness, you guys, like at least 400 jars, if not more a year, because I can all year long. Like right now I'm doing bone broth, but I buy mine in bulk. So this is a big sleeve, which I've used to this point of canning lids. I buy them in bulk, so I have them on hand and I don't have to worry about going and getting them. These are the regular mouth. When I'm doing things that are liquid like broth or sauces, I use my regular mouth jars because one, I can fit more in the canner and the lids are a little bit cheaper per piece. And I save my wide mouth jars for things like pickles or whole tomatoes, things like that where I'm actually gonna reach into the jar to perhaps grab some of them out individually like pickles or where I'm packing things inside and it's just easier I can get my hand in a wide mouth jar. So I, like I said, I buy these in bulk. I will we'll have a link in the video description so you can click through and check them out because it is great just knowing that I don't have to go and find and buy. I keep a little bit of boxes just right here um, but I just refill them from here. So I just have a small amount here right in the drawer that's right next to the stove when I'm doing all of my canning. And then I keep in the back, in the back pantry, sleeves like this of the canning lids in bulk. Okay guys, the broth is at a full boil. So you wanna make sure it's a roiling boil so that when you stir it, the bubbles don't stop. So you know it's at a full boil. So now it's time to get these jars filled. I like to add salt just to each individual jar and I use a half a teaspoon for the pint. I haven't used any salt when I was making the broth. I like to use a canning funnel because I tend to be messy. This just helps get everything into the jars. And then I've got my big old trusty ladle here. So we're just gonna go ahead and ladle these to a one inch headspace. Headspace is super important when you're canning. You need to make sure that you are following the correct headspace for any recipe that you're doing. This is such a good measuring tool. So it will tell you one inch, three quarter, half inch, and a quarter inch on your headspace because you're gonna use all of those in different canning recipes. So I can just tell at a quick glance if I'm at the one inch and I'm not, I want the top of the liquid to just touch the bottom of this for a one inch headspace. So we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit more in there. Right on the money, she is right at one inch. So this next step is really important. 
and you're gonna clean off, you're gonna wipe this on the rim. Now the reason that we're using, usually you'll just use a damp towel when you're doing things that are fruit or vegetables that don't have any grease or fat. But the reason that we're doing this is even though I skimmed the fat off, there still can be fat. And if you've got any fat or grease or any particles that are on the rim of this glass, then it can inhibit and stop it from sealing. And we really wanna make sure that it seals. So we're gonna tighten that fingertip tight. Now this is hot, so I can't really pick this up with my fingertips. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my jar lifter here. And the water inside my pressure canner I have set to medium heat. So I ended up with five pints of finished broth and so it's time to get the lid on and get the pressure canner up to pressure. that's coming out of this vent, but you can hear it. It's been going for 10 minutes. So now we need to put our weighted pressure gauge on, 10 pounds of pressure, if you are 1,000 feet or below sea level. When it's rocking and hissing like that, that's when you start your actual time for processing. Okay guys, so these just finished processing. We turned off the heat, let the pressure reduce naturally, meaning you don't do anything, you just let it cool down. And then you always wanna test it. This is a really hot, so use a hot pad before you take the lid off to make sure the pressure really is reduced. So you wanna go like this. So here that's a little bit of air coming out. So we're gonna let that sit for a few more minutes until we touch it and no sound comes out. So we'll test it. No noise, we're good to go. Now this is still really hot, so use mitts because if your bare skin touches this metal, it can burn. And we're gonna loosen up all of our wing nuts here. They always wanna lift it up and away from your face. So see this is blocking me from any amount of steam that would be coming out. If you put them on just a bare countertop, again, hot glass, cold counter, they can break and bust on you. It is so incredibly satisfying, one, to have this shelf stable ready to go, made at home from our homegrown items but knowing that I have the means to provide food for my family and I've got shelf stable food lining the pantry shelves, like it brings so much joy and so much peace of mind that I want for everybody. So I hope that everybody begins to learn how to can their food. Even if you do have to buy some of the stuff in order to can your food, it's so much better than anything that you can get in the stores and it sets you up for quick and easy meals and just like I said, that peace of mind, knowing what's in your food and that you have got food on the shelves to feed your family. And if you're interested in learning how to can safely and using updated and tested guidelines, I would love to share my 65 recipes with you, as well as step-by-step -step tutorials just like this one from everything from low and no sugar canning fruit to pickling tomatoes and then pressure canning things like broth, fish, smoked salmon, homemade soups, all of those wonderful things, and of course with our vegetables. So I look forward to seeing you get your jars filled up and on your pantry shelves. You can see all of the links below, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.